welcome back to my channel. This is Neanderthal and overall it's Neo for short. I am so glad you guys are here today. I got something exciting to show you. It is a battery. Um, Minecraft has added these new blocks to the game and it is called copper blocks and I will explain a little bit here in a minute. But I have a designated spot here marked by this block to where the battery needs to go. But before you need to do that, you need to have it over here on the charge dock and then bring it over and then put it down in there. And then now, why I like it so much, it is a toggleable block, meaning that if you copy it in a lit state, it'll keep that state even if there's updates by it. Um, and also, too, is that when you copy this block in, in, into a spot where it is already powered, it'll actually pick up that power uh, state, but a redstone lamp will not do that. So that's why this one is a good choice for this puzzle. Uh, the next feature, as you just saw, it actually has gravity acted upon it, so we will go over that too. And then, speaking of gravity, I wanted to keep that theme, and so when you extend it and then retract it back, as you saw, it actually looks like it is falling. Um, I do have the sticky piston here too. Um, it works just the same, uh, but it, it, it just kind of brings it down quicker. Um, if you do want to use the sticky piston, it'll be less command blocks to have to use, but this is my favorite, favorite, because it looks so cool. Let's get, man, I am just jumping all over the place. There we go, it is lit, and then we'll bring it back over here. Just like that. And then yes, I am going to put it back on the piston because I like to watch it fall. It just looks really neat. There you go. And then there it is. You did it! And then before I forget, and also is if you step on it, it will break. Alright guys, let's build it. Um, we have an identical puzzle here. As you can see, we have three parts to it. We're going to have our movable block, we're going to have our charging area, and we're going to have where that block needs to go after it's been charged. So now that we know that, I got these four that is set up as a movable block. I do have a video on that, so if, if you haven't seen it, I would just to let you know that the premise is that if you have that wax copper bulb in front of you, um, it's also going to check to see if there's an airspace after that, and if there is, it's going to slide that guy right into that airspace looking like they were going to push it. So we'll go ahead and put it down there. And then the fifth block here, because it's for each direction, you're going to have to do it for positive x, negative x, positive z, and negative z. And then this fifth one is just testing to see if it is one uh, below us under our feet, and if it is, it's just going to destroy it, causing entities, but we will go over that here in a minute. Let me grab the copper bulb, place that there, and we'll go ahead and power this guy on. So as you can see, it moves. So the first problem that we run into is being able to make this drop down. So we are going to gravitize it. I know it is a fancy word. So the structure for this block is going to be identical to movable blocks. We're going to start off with execute at a player. If block. Now we want to detect at the block that had just moved away from us. So that's going to be two blocks away from us. And we're going to check to see if it's that wax copper bulb. And then this is where we have to specify whether it's lit or unlit. And so we are going to go ahead and do lit false. And that just means we are checking for uh, a bulb that is not lit. And the reason why we got to do this is if we don't specify, it doesn't matter if it's lit or not. It's still going to target it, and we don't want that. So it's targeted for that. And then now we got to see if underneath that block is an air block. So that means it's going to be two away. And then it's going to actually be negative one. Well, not four. One on that one. And it needs to be air. And so if that is the case, we are going to run a set block command at the copper bulb, which is 2. 
and we are going to make it air. But we're only got we're just going to replace it. We're not going to destroy it. And there we go. We got that ready to go. And then this next block needs to be a chain block, but we got to remember that it needs to be conditional, guys, or it'll it'll go haywire, okay? Huh, huh, what's going on? Always active and chain now, we are going to start off this command with execute at the player because we want to use the player's relative coordinates. But this time we're going to do the align. Grasp is that whatever command after this, I'm going to align it to the X and Z coordinate time. And then we have to figure out the offset, which is about half. Um, I hope that doesn't confuse anybody, but that's my understanding on that. And then we are going to run a summon command. And this is going to be a falling block. It's basically just kind of like what your sand block goes off of. And then we're going to give it the texture of the wax copper bulb. So it looks like it's the same thing. Um, this, like I said, is going to be offset. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, 2.5. The Y doesn't ever get messed with. And then 0.5. So since we're working on the X coordinate, the Z coordinate is going to be 0.5. If you're working on the Z coordinate, then the X will be 0.5. It, even if you're doing the negative directions, um, it's always going to be a positive 0.5 on the offset of what you're working on. Now, if it is the negative that we're working on, negative X, then this will change to a 1.5. Just don't forget your negative. There's a lot of words getting thrown at you. But we'll, we'll go over that here in a minute. And now this is where we do our NBT data. We're going to start with time, comma, uh, block state. Make sure that block is capitalized and as well as state is capitalized too. Colon, curly bracket, and then capital N and name. Colon, and then we want to do air quotes. So it's waxed, copper, Oop. Bulb. Just like that. Oh, forgot the O. Copper bulb. We'll do it. Um, in air quotes and then two curly brackets. And there you go. It is green. We have selected that. Now, we're going to do the powered version of it too. And then also watch this. Whoop. Now, now watch this. As you can see, it did not copy over the state of this block. So remember, it needs to be conditional. Uh, help, help me. Um. Now, uh, what all you gotta do is change this false to true. That one fixes that for that one. And then this one needs additional information on it, which right after your air quotes, comma, properties. Make sure it is capitalized. You want to do a colon, open curly bracket, lit lowercase, and then a colon, and then air quotes, and then this is where we put true, and then end your air quotes, and then when you end your curly brackets, it should turn green again, and there you go. You have selected that. There we go. And then that goes for the rest of the other coordinates. And as you can see, they are grouped as two. So you're going to have eight for the unlit, and you're going to have eight for the lit. Whoops, it's this one. There we go. And now let's test it out to see if it works. So we'll destroy that. And there we go, it falls right in. It is so cool, guys. Now, um, on the other puzzle, I showed that if it's unlit and it falls in there, it breaks. So that is the next thing we are going to do. In order to do that, we need an armor stand right below it so that we can target it. I'm showing here is that um, if you have tilde across the board, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, and it's going to be right at the base plate. Then 1 is the torso of the head, and then 2 is going to be above his head. So just keep that in mind. My block of choice is this one, and then... Uh, the armor stand that we are going to um, execute at, which is, I called it break. You can name it anything you want, but um, you can name your armor stands through an anvil. That's how I did this. 
and then um, as you can see, this is where the block needs to land on, but it's too high, so I've got to push it one down. You could do it either by a set block, or you can use a uh, piston, which I'm going to do a piston, and you just shove it over the top of it. Uh, well, let's do that again. Got too much stuff in my hotbar here. All right, there you go. And it pushes it right over there. It does not affect the armor stand in any way. And so there you go. Um, like I said, we are going to try to detect this guy right above here, which means it's going to wind up right there. And as you can see, that does not destroy the armor stand. So two is what we're looking for. So chain block. We are going to execute oh, at, at E, because again, an armor stands an entity, and then we're going to target its name, which is break. Close it, and then this is where we're going to check for that block. Block, and it's got to be what we said was two. Um, wax, copper bulb. And then this, we got to specify again, the lit needs to be false. There we go. And then um, if that meets the requirement, we are going to run a set block command at that same location, which is two. And then we're going to set it air destroy. And this is going to create an entity as well, and so our next command block is going to take care of that. So our next block is going to be a chain as well. And this one, guys, is going to be a slash kill command. And then uh, dropped items are an entity as well. And it's, this time we're going to do type item. And then comma, and then this is where we have to specify what MB, MBT data we are looking for. And then we start with a open curly bracket, capital I, oh, T-E-M, which is item, colon, open curly bracket again, ID, which is lowercase, colon, and then air quotes. And then this one, actually, we're going to do Minecraft first, and then colon, and then the name of your item. Wax, copper, bulb, sound like a robot, bulb, and then we're going to end that with uh, air quotes, two closed curly brackets, and then a square bracket, and then it turns a light blue, meaning that you did it. So we'll push enter, and cross our fingers that it works, and it breaks. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. And then if you step on it, it breaks. It does not leave any entities behind. So now that we got that out of the way, the next thing that we have to work on is our piston to, uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and do the sticky one. And then this one is also going to require a armor stand as well. Because if we power that on, and we have this block here, it goes up like it's supposed to, but when it comes down, gravity doesn't act upon it, and I kind of like to keep that same feel. Uh, again, you can use a sticky piston, but I like the look of this better. So we'll go ahead and show you this. So as you can see, the piston is going to be setting right above the armor stand, and we need to detect the copper bulb, which is going to be at 4, and we also need to detect if there's air underneath it, which is going to be at 3. But before we do that, we need to get our armor stand, which I have named it Piston. Again, you can name it whatever you want, but this just helps me remember what it is for. Now, what's cool about the armor stand, guys, is it's only dependent on the y-axis, meaning it can be placed anywhere. Again, too, it needs to be, make sure it's done correctly. Okay. Awesome. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, we are creating that. It's going to be based the same way as what we did for the making gravity. Uh, you're going to have two pairs of them for the lit and unlit state. So let's go ahead and copy these guys over. 
Remember, change that to that. And then we'll, we'll go in here. Instead of executing at the player, we are going to do at entity, and then this is where we put the name of our armor stand, which is piston. Close our bracket, and then we are targeting the Y axis, and remember it was 4 for the wax cover ball lit to false. And then the, the air space, which is going to be at 3, which is right underneath it. And then we're going to set an air block right at the copper ball, which is 4. Push enter. And then this one, we need to change this again to at E. And then uh, the name, which is uh, piston. Close that off. And then I believe we got to change this to 4. And then it's offset by 0.5. So 0.5 in the X and 0.5 in the Z. And then the actual block in which you are trying to detect, which is 4. And then push Enter. We did that for the unlit. Now we're going to do it for the powered or lit one. So just remember that this has got to be chain, always active, and conditional. No, that's not conditional. I'm so sorry. It's the next one. This one is conditional. Yep. And then all we got to change here is the true. And then we got that additional thing that we have to add here, which is your properties. Properties. Um, colon, curly bracket, lit, colon, air quotes, oops, lit, uh, true, and air quotes, and then your curly bracket. And there you go, and that should be it. Okay, so let's run this guy. It should fail, should fail, <laughs> should have fell, and it did. Awesome, guys. Look at that. We have created that. We have, meh, words. We have replicated that puzzle. And so we'll go ahead and complete it. I just want to see this again. It is really neat. That. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, oh, I got ahead of myself. We need to do our power source, which I just put a torch underneath it. Just like that. Lights it right up, and then we can move it over here. Let's bring that back. And then again, like I said, the sticky piston it works, but I prefer it the other way. Ooh, flying now. Yeah, I know I could push it down that way, but I want to watch it drop. Just like that. And there we go. We did it. Who? What is our prize? Yes, it is another egg. Thanks for watching, and I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. As my wife always says, hooty hooty, chicken booty, and I will see you in the next one.